Okay guys, it's time to talk about being a sheepdog one more time. Let's get into this. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed the uh, nice tabletop venue items. We got a beautiful ZT452 CF or carbon fiber, beautiful Glock 19, which has been safety checked, and just a beautiful brass pen. Um, can't remember the maker of it, but it's a really beautiful brass custom pen. I've been in love with it. But today, we are talking about none of those things. Today, we're actually going to be talking about moral decisions when it comes to being a sheepdog. And before we go too far, I'm going to set the example, or so, to basically break this video down, we're going to start off with the example, and then we're going to go into uh, what I did, and then we're going to, I'm going to open it up for you guys to explain what you would do and how you would have handled the situation. So, let's jump into it. So, starting off with the example, like I said, so I was originally traveling down a road in Fairbanks, and of course I'm going to leave all of this information confidential, don't want to get anyone in trouble or anything like that, and I don't want to get a bad rap for exposing anyone. But uh, I was traveling down a road in Fairbanks, and I noticed one car length in front of me. There was a driver driving extraordinarily slow, actually about 20 miles under the speed limit. And I know our roads, especially if you watched my road trip video, uh, you know, you can see the roads are not the nicest roads. They're pretty slick, they're pretty nasty, but our roads at the same time aren't something to be extraordinarily feared, especially at this point in the year where, you know, you've been probably driving on these roads for probably about the last four to five months. You know, we get pretty used to driving on crappy roads. However, this person was driving very slow and it was very annoying, <laughs> but what surprised me most is after following the individual for probably about 10 minutes, I saw the person, you know, rounding a curve and they actually spun out with their vehicle, hit the side of the uh, road, which at this point in the year, there's like snow berms on each side of the road, so you're not just going to fly off into the ditch, but the individual hit uh, the road or the berm and you know it's like oh that's sucky you know and time to be a sheepdog because you know being a sheepdog just means helping out your community however you possibly can and how I do that one of the ways is of course as you guys probably know I have a truck and it's fully set up for pulling uh, pulling people out of ditches and I have you know toe straps I have chains I got everything uh, aside from maybe a winch uh, that I need to pull people out of ditches. So uh, I was getting ready to do that, but of course, before doing anything, I always talk to the individual because I don't want to just go up and start hooking up toe straps to someone, someone else's vehicle and start pulling them out of a ditch or something. Uh, so I got out of my truck, you know, turned on my emergencies, got out of my truck, and went to check on the person because first and foremost, you want to make sure the individual's okay. You want to make sure that, you know, you can help them. That's just kind of the polite and responsible thing to do. However, my big issue was when I got out of my vehicle and went up to the individual, um, the person was clearly intoxicated and it was so bad that you can smell alcohol in their vehicle. Uh, there was actually a open case of beers in the passenger seat, so you know you had your driver's seat and your passenger seat. And uh, yeah, there was, it was just really bad. And you could fully understand that this individual was completely intoxicated. And yeah, it was a pretty bad situation. And so this was where the story really gets interesting because this is kind of factors into moral decisions of what you're going to do. So the person, what I did, um, kind of getting in that to now what I did or how I reacted to the situation as a sheepdog is first I, I listened to the individual and they said they didn't have any friends they had an out-of-state license plate and so they didn't know anyone that could come and assist them and you know drive them back to their house I certainly was not about to um, get myself entangled with that type of situation and you know drive this person to God knows where and you know I don't want to get tangled into any issues because being a sheepdog that means you have to have foresight enough to know uh, when something is suspicious and to not get yourself trapped into that type of situation so I wasn't going to drive this person or their vehicle back to their house um, if that's even if they know where they're driving you know or going to um, so unfortunately 
there weren't wasn't a lot of options and of course there were a few other people that pulled off to the side of the road we all came to a consensus that we were not going to pull the person out because obviously someone who's already intoxicated is not safe to pull out of a ditch because luckily the individual wasn't very far off in the ditch uh, but at the same time you're not going to pull someone out just for them to get stuck or what I, my primary fear was is you know for them to potentially spin out again on the icy roads and hit oncoming traffic because most of the roads here in Fairbanks Alaska are you know just a single lane on each side and so you got your forward and your outbound or your coming in and going out lanes and so you know on such narrow roads like that you don't want a chance you know potentially hitting someone and killing them or yourself so we obviously we're not going to pull this individual out so it was at that point where I was the only one and you know I'm not a huge fan of the police but this is where it gets back to moral decisions of what you're going to do and unfortunately I did call I have to call uh, the troopers on this individual because there was really no other way there was no assistance from friends and no one else that could really assist this individual uh, in a safe manner and while in the state of Alaska, a DUI, which is what this one is, uh, is a very bad uh, misdemeanor. So it, it comes with a lot of issues and it's really, really a bad idea to be driving under the influence because it's very expensive and it's very bad for your driving record in the state of Alaska. And so unfortunately it ended up being a misdemeanor for the individual and the police did get involved. But um, there's really not much else that I could do safely and responsibly as a sheepdog. So, you know, I wanted to do this video because I want to hear you guys and what you might have done in this situation. And I also wanted to kind of talk about how sheepdogs, you know, I think a lot of us talk about, you know, the extreme situations where it's like, oh, you know, if someone's drowning, you rush in to save them. Or if, you know, there's an active shooter situation, you know, you put forth your tools and your knowledge to end or try to end that type of situation. And that's what sheepdogs are primarily talked about, and you know, that's what we also do. But there's a lot of other situations where, you know, you don't need deadly force, but at the same time, you still have to make tough moral decisions. So I would like to hear what you guys had to add to it. Um, hopefully this was pretty an, a, a pretty interesting example. I hope it's a more rare example because uh, it was pretty uh, scary even being just in that situation because the individual's vehicle was driving along on a curve and the vehicle actually spun around did a full 180 and you know it almost came back and hit the driver in front of us. And so just thinking about how you know the situation could have spiraled into a you know, accident where other people's lives could have been on the line. It could have happened very easily and very fast. So, number one moral story, don't drink and drive, please, or else you may get the police called on you, especially if it's me. Uh, and really, um, you know, there are some really tough moral decisions out there that, you know, at the same time, I don't want to hurt someone's life because the reason why I kind of say it's a moral decision is, you know, getting this person in trouble is really detrimental to their life. But at the same time, my thoughts too are, especially if it's not some erroneous gun control, gun grabbing law, I mean, there are still good laws out there, such as, you know, anti drunk driving laws. They are very important and they do serve a really good function. So, in my opinion, when someone breaks these laws, it's like you shouldn't do the crime unless you're fully prepared to do the time. So, it's unfortunate, um, and like I said, it's not that I wanted to do any of this or that I wanted to harm anyone, but sometimes as a sheepdog, you also have to know what's best for the community, and when we as sheepdogs say that, you know, we're here to protect the community and be the first line of defense against any aggressors or anything that could hurt our community, it also means individuals who pose threats not just through guns and active shooters but it also can be drunk drivers it can also be you know a plethora of different things I mean it can even be wild animals if there's a moose running on the loose and it's attacking people or a bear or a wolf 
It also means, you know, taking the appropriate actions and potentially killing that animal for the protection of the community. So, you know, I want to do this to help you guys think outside the box and just explain different types of situations that happen as sheepdogs. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this, this little view of the guns and or the gun, the knife, and the pen. And as always, God bless, and I'm out.